<laughs> you jerk. <laughs> Just shut the door on you. My name is Jonathan Best. I am 24 years old, and I work as a production director at Cumulus Radio, but I also own a martial arts studio. When I was younger, um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I didn't really have a thing. I mainly played video games, which I still do. I'm a huge gamer. Love them. Um, but really, I just I sat at home, I ate a bunch, and I played video games. And it was really affecting my health. Like, I was way overweight. And my dad always wanted to do some sort of martial art with me. Like, he thought that would be fun for me and him to do this, this thing together. Uh, but he had rods in his back because he had cancer when he was younger and um, he was born with Wilms tumor and he had it removed and all the surgeries that were done on him left his spine out of whack so they had to put rods in his back and it kept him from being mobile enough to uh, participate in martial arts with me. When I was about 10 years old um, he contracted yeah. cancer again. Okay. He had to go in for more cancer treatments and everything. He got on radiation and all kinds of stuff. And he was getting real sick. And I got, over the span of two years or so, I got used to seeing him go to the hospital. It was just kind of a routine thing. And um, so seeing him go to the hospital all the time, uh, it just kind of became a part of life. And then one time he sent me to stay with my grandparents over a weekend. And then he, uh, they told me that he went to the hospital again. So I was like, oh, okay, well, he's... This is nothing out of the ordinary. But then that night, we went up there, and it was that, that was it. So he died that night. And I had a really hard time getting over that. And about six months later, I saw an ad in the paper for East Mississippi Tonks Ado and um, ended up going. And, you know, I just always remember how much he wanted to do that with me. It wasn't really the fact that it was Tonks Ado. Really, it could have been, it could have been anything. <laughs> it could have been... A number of things but I just have it happened to be East Mississippi Tong Sto and but once I started on my martial arts journey um, I realized that I got really lucky falling into Tong Sto because and especially the World Tong Sto Association which is what what I'm a part of um, that is because they really um, encourage you to explore not only Tong Sudo, but different martial arts, and bring it back to your studio. Uh, in so my studio, uh, I named it Best there, Academy of Martial right Arts, here, and, and we here, are under the World Tong Sudo Association. We right. rank up this, through this this our association and our belts and, and our the way that we rank, but I try to bring a little bit of everything in, and at the same time not devaluating any of the Tong Sudo-ness of it. You know. I'd, uh, it's, it's still first and foremost, but sometimes we'll just have a class where we're like, let's let's get on the ground, let's see what happens, you know, let's let's explore this area that we've never that we never looked at. Sometimes we'll grab some sticks and we'll say, okay, let's go and let's do some stick fighting. Let's see what works. Let's see what doesn't. Some people are more punchers. Some people are more kickers. Some people are more joint manipulation based. Like like they they work better grabbing onto people and, and manipulating them. Whereas like some people like a good standing game. Some people like to be on the ground. So no matter what type of person that is, I try to oblige that and um, make all of my students well rounded and, and strong in their in their area that that they enjoy. Okay. It's still going like it's in the back of your throat. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like this, it's like you're getting hit. I want to hear a right? Yeah. You have my permission. Ready? Okay. There you go. That's what I want to hear. Do it one more time. That made me happy. That made me real happy. <laughs> you know, I, I went up through, through the belts. Uh, white, orange, green, about green and brownish. I was like, the idea of owning a studio started seeping into my head. And then by the time I hit red belt, I was like, really like, I really want to make a career out of this. Um, I want to make, uh, I want to do martial arts for a living. Uh, I want to, I want to karate chop people and I want people to pay me money for it <laughs> and there's so many uh, avenues that I explored I explored doing um, and it's not that I've completely shut those avenues off either um, I've thought about doing 
like fight choreography. It's just such a niche market. It's really hard to work your way in. And really, if you want to go through like the super professional way and um, become a fight master of stage combat, you have to have a lot of money <laughs> because it takes a good chunk of change. Like just just to do like a, a weekend training thing where you may or may not pass and uh, in like one weapon is like two hundred and fifty dollars and you ha I think there's like between seven and ten weapons that you have to 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 know inside and out and there's different tiers so many weapons you know uh you get different ranks of uh, I forgot what they're I don't know what they're called but it's like at the top of it is is fight master and at that point that's when people start calling you and being like hey can you um choreograph this fight scene for us so that's something that I've always dreamed about doing but um I just don't have the money <laughs> to, to, to explore that right now. I have a lot of weapons because I want to be well versed in a lot of weaponry. I've I practiced nunchucks before I ever stepped foot into a dojang and in, into a studio. And there's a couple weapons I'm like that with. I used to play with staff all the time, um, just emulating what I what I would see on like the Power Rangers or something when I was like six years old. And so I like had these, these movements that I was really accustomed to doing just on my own. And then when I started my journey as a martial artist, that kind of bleeded into it, like just these, these roles and things that I was comfortable with. And so sometimes there's, there's things about the way that I use a staff that is different than everybody else. But I think I don't think that's just me. I think that everybody brings their individuality into it. There's things that as a brotherhood, martial artists do exactly the same. Um, it's really hard for me to pick a favorite because I think they all have their uses. To me, I love practicality, right? Because what would have been my favorite weapon in feudal Japan or whatever is not going to be my favorite weapon nowadays. I'll start from my least favorite because um, like I love the sword but it's more of an art to me like there's an art of wielding a sword I don't think that swords come into play very much nowadays you're not going to be defending yourself with a sword in 2018 17 what year is it 17 <laughs> 2017 or 18 staffs are really good because they're um, like, you can use the same ideology that you use on a staff. You can just pick up a tree branch and use it the same way you would with a staff. You're more likely to find like a, a mop handle or a, a, you know, just any long stick that is, uh, you're likely to use. Same thing with a short stick. Um, you train with a short stick, like an Eskrima stick, uh, much differently than you would a, a staff. That being said though, my absolute favorite weapon is the cane because the cane is not, it's not a very popular weapon, and, um, but I love it because it's so inconspicuous. You can take it on an airplane. You know, if you try to take a, a mop handle on the people will be like, what, why are you taking this mop handle on the airplane? You know, you just say, I, I, my knees hurt, you can take a cane onto an airplane, you know what I mean? And then you have a means of defending yourself. Like the cane's awesome though, because you can use it in the same way that you use, you can hold it in the middle, you can use it the same way you use a staff, you can hold it from the end, you can use it one-handed the same way you do a short stick, you can hold it two-handed the same way you use a sword. I mean, it's not going to cut anybody, unless you have one of those fancy sword canes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But um, you can still use it then in that same that same manner and get the same velocity and impact you would with a sword. And it has a nice little hook on the end of it. And that hook is so unique to the cane. You don't you don't see it a lot in other uh, on other weapons. Uh, in fact, you don't see it at all on other weapons. And, and there's so many little things you can do with it. Little ways that you can spin it. Little ways that you can grab someone by the neck or by the ankle, or you can have someone by the wrist and put them into a. Uh, a wrist lock like uh, there's there's so many cool little things that you do with the cane every time I pick up a cane and I'm practicing with someone else I'm like oh I never thought of this before there's always so many doors to unlock when it comes to a cane that's why I love it so much um, my studio right now comes before everything else um, I've put so much work into it and I've continued putting so much work into it every day I wake up I work on my studio somehow wow. in my dreams one day I'll just have the studio that I can just put my heart and soul into 
and that be my only focus. My wife's name is Chelsea Best. I met her in community college. We were both in marching band together. I haven't regretted it at all. It's been it's been a fantastic journey, and I am excited every day I get off of work so I can come home and see her. And the fact that she is taking this class under me it means a lot to me that she would uh, she would do this with me. So um, very excited to see just how she deals with um, with the challenges that come her way as far as this art goes. Martial arts is more than just kicking and punching. It's, it's about building yourself and, um, and making yourself a better person, no matter what that is to you, um, taking, t taking the qualities that you want to improve upon and improving upon them and not settling on things. And, uh, and that's what I kind of want to give to my students now, you know. What I'd say to new students is that you'll find out very quickly if it's something you enjoy and if it's, if it's not. But if it's something you enjoy, then just have fun with it. Really learn it, get as much in, get as much out of it as you can get because what you put in, you get out. If you, if you come in and you just go through the motions and you just kind of just survive the class, you're not really going to get anything out of it. Get it, put as much in as you can get because you're going to get as much out. To me, it's my life. It's my goals and my ambition. It's what I do. It's, it's who I am. It's about pushing yourself and making yourself a better person. It helped me get through so much as a child. And like, I know it's really cheesy and corny, but you know, it's like, it's something that I do kind of as a, a, a tribute to my dad. So it's very special to me in that aspect. Because like I said, he always wanted to do it with me. So I know he's not here now, but I think he would be very proud to see, you know, how far I've come. Not only was it for my father, but once I got into it, I, I just really fell in love with it. Um, it was really therapeutic and it helped me better myself and try and become, try and be someone who everyone else can depend on.